grief can be an intensely isolating experience as we deal with the devastation of the death of someone in our family. Our world has changed, sometimes massively. We feel terrible. We feel we're going crazy. We find that we're seeing everything through a phase of unfamiliarity and uncertainty, and we feel cut off from the world. Partly, it's because of the world around us. We're cut off by all the expectations of a world that doesn't understand death and grief, that doesn't talk about death and grief, and that avoids anything sad because positive, smiling attitudes are always much more welcome than our sadness. No matter that our sadness is real and authentic. We're cut off from the world when people around us don't get it. When they say, I understand, but it's obvious they don't. We're cut off because people avoid us. We're hard work, we're sad, and we might be embarrassing if we cry. It can go the other way too. We can't talk to someone when their eyes are glazing over or if they look at their watch. But the result is the same. We're cut off. We're cut off by advice that doesn't fit and by being told you should, as if they know what's best for us. We're cut off by insensitive words, even sometimes coming from the most well-meaning people. We're cut off by people who expect us to be over it now. They've done the funeral and the condolences, the hubbub has died down, and now the loss is history, leaving us alone with our grief, with our pain, and often with our anger about the insensitivity of the people around us. We're cut off by ourselves too, by our lack of energy to approach the world, and by the fear of how we'll cope when we try. We might fall in a heap and we don't know how we'll survive. Someone might ask us how many children do we have, or they might just fail to say the name, the precious name of our loved child or sibling. We look to others around us for support and connection, but other people are not the same anymore as we and they each struggle with our individual emotions and uncertainties. We don't know what to say to people and they don't know what to say to us. Sometimes we need people, but it's all too much and so we retreat. We retreat to the safety of our home where we can avoid the outside world. We retreat to a room where we can cry on our own. We retreat by avoiding painful conversations even though we need to have those conversations. We retreat because we're drained by our emotions and we don't have the energy to face the world. Sometimes that's the only way we can cope. Then, if we're lucky, we start to find people who really listen and we feel less alone. We find the courage to ask for the things we need we find places where we can behave how we feel like and not be judged. We find people who have suffered in a similar way to us and we find we're all of us not so crazy as we had thought we were. Loneliness and isolation can be horrible, but we find that being alone is sometimes okay. Sometimes solitude can be a welcome break from the world. A time alone to process what has happened a time to remember, a time to dream, and a time to think. Gradually, we work through the pain of our grief and find ways to re-engage with the world. We discover new ways to make life meaningful and new friends whom we can count on. We start to work out our new normal and we adapt to that. For many of us, the Compassionate Friends has been our turning point, where shared experiences have broken down a lot of the loneliness and isolation, and for many people, this has been a lifeline. It is often said at the Compassionate Friends, we need not walk alone. <laughs>